What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. All right, this story's called Entitled Mother Puts Her Children's Lives in Danger. This will be a long one. Uh, backstory. I'm a volunteer firefighter in a small town with a population of around 18,000 people. My hometown is located near one of the biggest cities in my country. We have an artificial ice rink where the ice is created by an ammonia cooling system. For anyone who doesn't know, ammonia is pretty bad stuff and can cause tracheal burns, bronchial and alveolar edema, and airway destruction if inhaled. So, since we knew about this, we often had training sessions with our fire departments on this sports facilities, practicing on how to deal with a worst case scenario. So, this happened last summer. We received the alarm with the text, strong odor in sports facilities, at location, at around 7 p.m. To be honest, everyone that received this alarm knew exactly that a huge pile of poo just hit the fan. Since we're all volunteer firefighters, we weren't at our fire station, but had to drive there first. It took me about four minutes to put my shoes on, rush to my car, and drive to the station to gear up. We arrived at the location shortly after, and we could all smell the ammonia as soon as we left our truck. It was a bad stench that hurt your nose and immediately made you tear up. We all knew this was bad, and we were fully exposed to this hazardous stuff. Before we even got the order from our team leader, we geared up with respiratory protection devices. Those things weigh at around 33 pounds, and since it was around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it was pretty warm. We realized pretty fast that we were way understaffed because it was in the middle of the week and around five junior football or soccer teams were currently training on these sports facilities. Somewhere around 200 kids and a few of their coaches. So we received orders from our fire chief, guy in charge, squad one, OP in charge, set the perimeter for in a danger area and decontamination. They include a bird's eye view of the whole uh, facility, I guess. But anyways, uh, they go on to describe it, sort of. The green area was the location of our mobile HQ, also the waiting area for all the firefighters that hadn't received a task yet. The yellow the yellow area was the outer danger area, where no civilian was allowed in. The red area was the inner danger area, where no one was allowed to enter without proper gear, nor leave that area without decontamination. Becomes important later. The black area was the direct surroundings of the cooling system facilities, where the ammonia was leaking. So this was the area where only the specialists were allowed in, in those full body hazard suits you all know from the movie and TV shows. The blue was the decontamination area, where we put up our decontamination tent, including mobile showers and all the gear we needed like extra clothing and stuff. The red and black area ended under an overpass of the freeway. Freeway was still open because way above us. Also, I put the decontamination zone under this overpass. So I've sent a few guys to put up barriers and to send people out of the yellow zone. Since we are a voluntary fire brigade, we didn't have the proper gear for this kind of event, so we had to wait until the real deals, the professional firefighters, would show up. Just to say, even as a voluntary fire brigade, we aren't looked upon as such from the pros. Sure, for them it's daily business and those guys are trained like beasts, but they never let us feel less important nor inexperienced. That's nice. So my job was basically to stand on my decontamination zone and wait, still in full gear with the breathing device on my back. I put the mask on, once in a while when a wave of stench was blown into my direction by the wind. After a few minutes, the pros arrived and I helped them prepare their gear. Two of them suited up in those fancy full body hazard suits and after a short briefing by the guy in charge, they walk away towards the cooling facility. A few minutes pass and then this happened. Enter entitled mother with two of her kids. This absolute and complete Karen, haircut, clothing, and attitude, walked towards me, inside the black zone. On her left hand, her six-ish-year-old boy, still in his football gear, coughing his lungs out, and carried by her on her right arm, a toddler at around two or three years old, whimpering. Ahem, excuse me? Lady, what are you doing? How long would this little training of yours take? I'll have to bring my babies back home for dinner. Are you out of your 
mind? You're in a contaminated area. Get over here, now! How dare you speak to me like that? I need you to open the silly barrier your buddies put up so I can drive my car out. Lady, this isn't a training exercise. You're putting yourself and your kids in danger. So get your ass over here right now. Toddler on her arm starts crying and the boy says to entitled mother, Mommy, my throat hurts. Oh God, that was gross. See, you made my baby cry. Now move the barrier out of my way. You're just standing there and doing nothing. It can't be that bad. I wanted to run into the zone to grab the kids, but I couldn't risk it. If I would have jumped over the barrier, she would maybe try to run away directly towards the cooling facility. Also, she could have dropped the child because I definitely would have tackled her. Luckily for us, the two guys that entered the facility earlier were on their way back out. They saw Entitled Mother and stormed towards her, grabbed the kids and Entitled Mother and dragged them towards the decontamination zone. She tried to resist, but these pro dudes are merciless. One guy took the kids and the other grabbed Entitled Mother by her neck and pulled her towards me. She screamed and tried to kick the dude, but he was pretty unimpressed. Guy in charge came running because he heard her screams. What the hell is going on here? Oh, Entitled Mother walked past the upper barrier and wanted to drive her car out. Are you out of your freaking mind? You're putting your kids' lives in danger because of your stupid car. Entitled Mother was screeching at the top of her lugs. OP wouldn't open the barrier and then the other guy assaulted me. That's kidnapping and I will sue you. All right, go ahead. I'll get the police for you. Guy in charge turns around and walks towards our trucks, only to return a couple of minutes later with two cops. In the meantime, we gave the boy and toddler a breathing mask and EMTs were checking them. Entitled Mother was furious and even tried to kick one of the EMTs. Lady, shut your mouth and get over here. I saw my chance and had to speak up. I'm sorry, I, uh, I can't let her out of the zone. She needs to be decontaminated. She gasped and her face turned from deep red into panic white. What does that mean, decontaminated? Am, am I in danger? Guy in charge knew exactly what I was on to and turned to the officer. Correct. We can't let anyone out of the danger zone without decontamination. I'll get some uh, female firefighters to help with her. And he again walked away. What? What does that mean? Answer me! Well, since you've been exposed to a dangerous and hazardous material, we need you to completely undress yourself and step into the decontamination. We'll help you wash down all the potentially dangerous substances you might be exposed to. Note, this is in fact the process we had to follow in such a scenario. Everyone, including our personnel, had to go through this. Strip down, put clothes into hazard bags, step into the shower and wash for a couple of minutes. The water in the shower comes directly from a fire hydrant and is freezing cold. And that's the reason why almost only dudes are usually inside the danger zone. There is no separate shower booth for women or no special treatment. And for time-saving reasons, we don't put up privacy protection. One of the guys, cool dude, who had the hazard suit on, started to undress himself and grinned at Entitled Mother. Well, I can wash down your back if you want. Entitled Mother was speechless and in pure shock. You can't do that. I have rights. Sorry, lady. Can't help you. That's the procedure. You put this all on yourself. Entitled Mother was shaking and in tears. She suddenly lost balance and almost fainted. Cool dude catches her so she would fall to the ground. Guy in charge comes back after a short time. Sorry, lady. Bad news. All female firefighters are currently taken by other tasks. She stared at Guy in charge and almost most hyperventilated. She couldn't say a single word. We all saw how bad this was and Guy in Charge broke our charade up. Good news, uh, we resolved the situation and you're no longer in danger, but the EMTs will take your kids to a hospital just to be sure. I jumped over the barrier and helped Entitled Mother back up. Cool Dude and me escorted her to the police officers since they wanted to chat with her. Cool Dude didn't press charges even if she kicked him multiple times, neither did the EMTs. A few weeks later, I saw one of the police officers again at another emergency, and we had a small chat. He told me that they pressed charges because of her endangering her kids. I don't know what the outcome was, but usually this leads to a huge fine and some visits from child services. Unfortunately, we have to deal with that kind of people way too often, so if you ever see a firefighter or EMT at work, show them the respect they deserve. Hope you like my little story, and thanks for reading! 
This story's called, For Once, The Daughter Is Actually An Angel At A Mall. Weird, I, I know. Hey guys, Hearts here. I was kind of hoping I would never have to post here, but alas, here we are. Oh, and by the way, I'm on PC, so I apologize for any spelling mistakes. Enjoy my misery, I guess. Here's the cast. Um, Entitled Mother. Me, a 14-year-old with many problems. A lot of problems. Sweet girl. Security. Jake, an actual legend. Anyways, on with the story. So this happened on Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. And it got me very, very, very annoyed. That's actually the day I flew back here. I went to a mall that's near my house with my friend who we'll call Jake. And he is an actual legend. He's always been there for me no matter what. He's amazing. Anyways, I was wearing a Colorado Rams hoodie, which is extremely warm, important later, and a Volcom t-shirt with a pair of ripped jeans, a beanie, and fingerless gloves, and a ring that extends over my finger. Hot topic. So Jake and I ride ripsticks a ton, and we decided to ride them there. And when we got there is when the fun starts. Yay! We ride up to the doors and jump off, picking up our ripsticks and walking inside when a little girl, sweet girl, comes up to us and looks at our boards and says, Wow, those are cool! Can you ride them? I nodded and hopped on mine to show her and she ooh, with delight which got the attention of her mother, Mama Bear. Excuse me? Oh man, I hate that voice. It's like metal silverware on China. Horrid. This entitled mother comes storming over and I jump off my board, quickly picking it up as I see her going to grab it. Ma'am, this is my board and you cannot take it? That's theft, I say. Well, you aren't even supposed to ride indoors anyway, much less have one of those. You were obviously trying to get my daughter to get on it so you could steal her. Which is a stupid accusation because... Well, I'll link a photo of one to show you. There's absolutely no space whatsoever for two people. And in case you don't know what a ripstick is like, uh, it's basically a skateboard, but instead of a board, it's like two little foot places where you put your feet, uh, and two wheels that wobble back and forth as you ride, and that, you know, that motion causes it to go forward, and it's, it's pretty fun to ride. It takes a little bit to learn, but once you do, it's a ton of fun. I recommend trying one out. Anyways, there's just no space for two people, that's all you gotta take away from this. Jake and I just both started laughing, and I said, yeah, like, that would even work. Entitled Mother said, you need to get out of this mall because I am the, I'm the manager. Sure, Jake said. Karen turned manager. What have we come to? We both laughed again and walked off with a fuming Entitled Mother watching us go. Oh, you thought the story ends here. So did I. We were both wrong. Later on, Jake and I were buying ourselves vans from a place we'll call Sumi's. I was buying the rainbow vans, aka the gay vans, and Jake was buying a pair that were like mine, just black and white, and I had taken off my hoodie because I was sweating and guess who walks up behind us in line? Mama Bear and Sweet Girl. Entitled Mother notices my vans and makes a disgusted noise and says to Sweet Girl, Gays out of ceases, they should be killed. Oh no, she didn't. No, she freaking did not. I turned around right after Jake did to see Jake getting in her face and saying very quietly, Don't you dare say that, ever! I will personally beat the ever-living crap out of you, bench! Leave us the hell alone! As I said, Jake is a legend. I give her the middle finger and turn back around when I hear, Young man, cover up your scars. I will not have to show those to my innocent baby. As I said earlier, I have some serious problems and I cut myself a lot. Sad to say, but it's true and I have some seriously gnarly scars lining my arm. At this point, we had had enough and so had the cashier. And the cashier said, Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave for harassing these two customers. Entitled mother literally threw a fit, like a three-year-old, and sat down on the floor, arms crossed, red face, wailing, like a banshee. The cashier unclipped a walkie-talkie and spoke into it and said, Hey, can we get security to Sumi's? Thanks. About a minute later, two security officers arrive and walk straight up to the cashier, and they talk for a second. After they turn around, pick up Entitled Mother, and literally carry her out the door. Sweet girl turning to us, saying a quick, sorry, and leaving after her mother. After that, we just walked around for a bit and left. 
Happy ending, I guess. Thanks for reading my anger. Also, if you have any negative comments about gays or anything, keep them to yourself, please. I don't want or need that. This story's called... Entitled Mother Thinks She Can Swap Her Children's Father As Easy As She Can Her Boyfriend. Sorry if there are any format issues on mobile. My story begins eight years ago when I started seeing my now ex, Entitled Mother. She has a daughter that we will call Sally. When Entitled Mother and I got together, it seemed perfect except for one thing. Sally's dad seemed to never want to see his daughter. Me being the caring person I am, um, that was raised by step parent gladly stepped up and became daddy. Time went on, we had a son, more time went on, and I started to see how manipulative she is and all around crazy. I decided to break it off with her. One month later, she tells me she's pregnant and being the logical person that I am, know that babies don't save relationships, but was there for her every step of the way during pregnancy and gladly have both of my sons every other weekend and holidays as well as four weeks during the summer. Enter her new boyfriend. I notice my now two-year-old son calling her boyfriend daddy, and after talking to her about this and trying to reason with her that she's confusing our youngest son, it clicks in my head and I'm overcome with guilt as I now realize I was used to push her daughter's father out of the picture and she is now trying to do the same to myself. Luckily, he wasn't hard to track down. I spoke with him on the phone about everything that happened and apologized over and over again for being blind enough to be able to be used like that and am now letting him see his daughter after seven years because I was smart enough to get a parent plan and his daughter comes over to my house with my sons. Entitled mother doesn't know yet, but we are both taking her to court and doing whatever we can to get our children away from her. We'll update if people want and we'll respond to any questions and comments that I can. And and he basically says thanks for the encouragement and he'll update as he can but it goes slow because that's court i will definitely update when i get the two of them together multitudes of father every day are living the hell that this man has i can't even claim to know how he feels because i am fortunate enough to still be able to see my children and his this one is for you guys there is hope for a father's justice don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.